Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video, and today is not a why no one plays, but something a little similar. What we're going to do instead is make an episode on why everyone plays. As the name implies, why everyone plays is where I talk about characters who are super popular, you know, the ones that are used by everyone under the sun, detailing what makes them so coveted in contrast to the characters that no one plays. To kick off the first episode, let's start with everyone's beloved Geo Daddy, Zhongli. While most of us know the extent of his power right now, there was a time where he was nowhere near as good. Zhongli, just like his lore, is a very mysterious individual, unlike other guys who like to boast about their fighting prowess or give off this aloof and in some cases edgy vibe. Zhongli is a man who certainly stands out from the crowd, but when you get to know him for the first time, you don't really get the idea that he's this almighty ass-kicking god. His first impression wasn't too exceptional either. On release, Zhongli was pretty underwhelming. His elemental skill did very little damage, and the shield wasn't all that much better than Noel's. The only thing keeping him strong was his elemental burst, relatively impressive in power and crowd control, but not enough to justify busting out the old Benjamins for him. The main issue with character-generated shields for Geo units was that it was only really good against Geo damage, and there aren't that many Geo enemies in the game to begin with. Taking into account how important he was to the story as the actual Geo Archon, the Genshin community was disappointed in him to say the least, sparing no effort to harass the living hell out of Mihoyo to make him stronger. And after weeks of this taking place, they finally acquiesced, changing his Jade Shield from token protection to one of the most powerful single defensive abilities in the game. Alongside this, they went ahead and improved his overall damage based on his max health, allowing him to remain relevant in damage even though you had to build tank stats on him. Additionally, they did a few system-wide buffs to the Geo element overall. Patch 1.3 was enough to catapult Zhongli out of mediocre status and into tier 0. To this day, he's widely considered to be one of the most overpowered units in Genshin Impact. Sorry for bringing up Spiral Abyss all the time, but he consistently ranks top 3 on usage rate, boasting a staggering 92% pick rate as of version 2.3, trailing only slightly behind Bennett and Kazuha. His influence spans far beyond just that. Against every world and major boss, he's such a good choice to have on your team that he partially contributes to the whole reason why dedicated healers in Genshin Impact are seen as unnecessary. One might argue that his high popularity stems from the lack of representation in the Geo department, and that might be partially true. When the only competition he has to deal with is Ningguang, Noel, Albedo, and Geo Traveler, that's kind of a shoe in Conversely, we have Diluc and Kokomi who aren't bad units by any means. However, given who they have to contend against for a spot in your party, they look much less desirable relatively speaking. All the same, that makes Zhongli's popularity all the more significant. He single-handedly makes the Geo element good, at least before Albedo got his new fancy weapon. Against all the other top tier elements like Pyro, Cryo, and Animo, the fact that he's tier 0 status only attests to how good he is. So without further ado, let's explain why. Zhongli's most defining trait is his ability to effectively trivialize 95% of Genshin Impact's already low difficulty through one word, face tank. That's not even an exaggeration either, he pretty much removes the need for you to have a healer on your team. Like most hack and slash type games, the primary defensive mechanic used to handle enemy attacks is by avoiding or dodging them. But the player's limited stamina requires them to dash only when necessary so as not to run out and leave themselves even more vulnerable. Zhongli's Jade Shield pretty much solves this dilemma altogether by making it so you can literally face tank almost every attack in the game. A well-built Zhongli with level 10 or higher Dominus Lapidus can supply you with upwards of a 10,000 HP shield every 12 seconds. Technically, it's only around 6 to 7,000, but remember, the shield gives you a 1.5 times damage absorption against all sources of damage, which then brings it to 9 to 10.5. And that's not including shield bonus from artifacts and his own passive. One other thing is that if you manage to get Constellation 2, his elemental burst gives a brand new J shield to you and nearby players if you're in co op, and Planet B Fall has a cooldown of 12 seconds. In theory, assuming you have enough energy recharge to do so, you can have a Jade Shield twice every 12 seconds, which means a 10k plus HP shield every 6 seconds on average. Even in Spiral Abyss, where you run into enemies close to level 100 on floor 12, I have yet to run into a single instance where whatever I'm going up against is dealing over a thousand damage per second. And again, you can still use your stamina to dodge the big attacks while ignoring the small ones. It's safe to say that his Jade Shield renders you virtually indestructible against any domain, dungeon, or boss currently available in the game at the time of this video's release. Now, there was a new type of enemy released in version 2.2 called Rift Hounds, which can inflict a debuff on you known as Corrosion, dealing damage over time that ignores shields, so even if you're juiced up by Zhongli, you'll still be bleeding. But, your health won't drop below 15% with Corrosion, so as long as you keep the shield up 100% of the time, it's a non-issue. In fact, that might actually be a good thing for certain characters like Hu Tao, who loves to be below half HP to get her bonus damage. Funnily enough, I heard that a few players intentionally remove him from their team, 
because he makes the game too easy to play, and I can kind of agree with that. But at the same time, he is a god, you know. I mean, not to completely disregard game balance, but I believe the Archon should be some of the most powerful units in the game. They're deities, it would be kind of pathetic if they were weak. Zhongli and Shogun are both top tiers in their own rights, and even Venti, despite being the weakest of the seven, has remained to this day a very serviceable character, only narrowly beaten out by Kasuha. See, Genshin Impact's current meta, if there even is a meta, is predicated on damage. Lots and lots of damage. We have yet to run into an area, or boss, or even Spiral Abyss level where you're taking so much damage that you need healers. The best support units right now are those whose central utility hinges on offensive augmentation. What separates Bennett, Xingqiu, Kazuha, Zhongli, Xiangling, and Shogun from Barbara, Chichi, Tolma, and Kokomi, support Kokomi anyway, is that the former group supports the team through damage, not defense. Bennett's ultimate is an unconditional huge attack buff for your entire party. Xingqiu's ultimate turns any character into a one-man vaporized, freeze, electrocharge reactor, not to mention the swords themselves do some pretty serious damage. Kazuha can corral enemies together and augment his party's elemental damage, and elemental mastery if you have his second constellation, alongside doing persistent damage. Whatever defensive elements they have like regeneration or damage reduction is icing on the cake. Zhongli's utility may seem largely for self-protection at first glance, but the best part is, he provides all of that defensive support with little to no loss of field time and DPS. Let me explain. Whenever you take damage from attacks, especially stronger ones, your character enters hit stun, also known as flinching or interruption. Against large clusters of enemies, you might get chain stunned if you fail to dodge the first attack, which hurts your overall DPS since you cannot act. The way shields work in Genshin, any damage you take is instead absorbed by the shield, as if you took no attack at all. In other words, you don't flinch. Moreover, when you're running around avoiding enemy fire, that's time spent not attacking. It's this very reason that shields are far superior to healing in Genshin because it grants you super armor, so even though Zhongli's Jade Shield doesn't explicitly boost your attack or elemental damage, he allows you to face tank almost everything in the game, implying you don't need to waste any time dodging attacks and instead can brute force your way through everything. Oh, don't misunderstand, this man does bring explicit pain. One thing I have yet to mention about his Jade Shield is that it also emits an aura effect that lowers all nearby enemies' physical and elemental resistance by 20%. So basically, you do 20% more damage to them while the shield is active. That's just his elemental skill. Zhongli's elemental burst, Planet Befall, causes a literal meteor to fall from the sky with some of the highest damage scaling I've ever seen that also petrifies all non-boss targets on impact for up to 4 seconds. Petrification is basically a freeze by the way, so for 4 seconds, those guys ain't doing jack. Additionally, thanks to Dominance of Earth, all that HP you spent building on him to make his shield stronger makes his attack stronger as well. Most notably, a third of your maximum health is added to Planet Befall's already considerable damage. Do not underestimate how much that meteor does, it hits like a truck. Something you may have noticed about Zhongli's support capabilities is that they're currently not emulated by any other character right now. Yes, the Geo element is the least explored of the six available in the game, but even not among his peers, no one can do the same things that he does. For one, he's the only unit in the game with non-elemental reaction-based lockdown. To my knowledge, the only other way to stun enemies is through Freeze, but that limits you down to just Cryo and Hydro characters, although Child and Chi-Chi or I believe Ayaka and Xingqiu do this quite effectively. Apart from Freeze, Planet Befall is the only other way to stun, stagger, whatever semantic you want to use in Genshin Impact as we know it. Another unique thing about him is that Dominus Lapidus can instantly destroy all ore nearby if you hold the skill. I might be wrong on this, but I don't think the other three Geo characters can do this. Then again, it's more of a convenience thing and not related to combat, but it's still nice for everyone trying to farm ores for weapon experience. And speaking of Dominus Lapidus, the Stone Pillar can block attacks without being too obstructive unlike Geo Traveler. One of my favorite applications for this is against the Boss Child, who always opens up with a flurry of arrow shots. As if that wasn't enough, he's also one of the few characters in Genshin who has all useful constellations. In Why No One Plays Amber and Kuching, one of the biggest problems I mentioned were their terrible constellations, which in their defense only applies to whales, a very small minority of the player base, but it's still worth bringing up. Zhongli C1 allows him two stone pillars on the field at a time. That's two instances of geo damage, two sources of crystallize, etc. C2, as I talked about before, is a free jade shield with every meteor. C4 makes the meteor even bigger and extends the petrification by two seconds, up to a maximum of six. Six seconds of complete lockdown, that's insane. And lastly, C6 converts a portion of Jade Shield's damage into healing. So Max Constellation Zhongli all but invalidates the existence of Barbara, Kokomi, and Chi-Chi in the healing department. His own regeneration effect can even counter corrosion. There's just so many things about him that make him valuable to have, whether you're in combat, exploring around the world, or going deep into Spiral Abyss that it beggars belief if there's a single situation where he isn't useful. 
And as for my last reason, the most important reason of all, he's a man of class, character, culture, composure. What are the descriptive words to start with a C are there? Come on guys, we all know that's why everyone loves the Geo Daddy. When you go from a ditzy near duel like Venti to this? At least this guy is useful and fun to be around. Sure, he may be as broke as a college student, but he has a job, and let's not forget his voice. Keith Silverstein did a phenomenal job giving Zhong Li this calm and aged demeanor that you would expect from a 6,000 plus year old god. I personally am a huge fan of the mellow and laid back but can kick your ass in any time trope character in video games and anime. Kinda like Yoda from Star Wars, the guy who looks relatively harmless and is overall chill and gentle but is this super crazy overpowered thing. Everyone plays Zhongli because everyone loves Zhongli, like the character, not just in terms of gameplay but his personality, his status, etc. And no matter how much people deny it, Genshin is to some extent a waifu husbando game, and to this day, Geo Daddy is best daddy. But on a more serious note, amidst all the praise that I've given him so far, there is a concern I have with his existence. In my previous video on the problem with Genshin's character design, I talked about how some units are just far too effective and versatile, which can potentially suffocate character diversity when compounded by Genshin's extremely unfriendly free-to-play environment. Those that don't have the wherewithal to get every single 5-star will save up their resources for whichever one covers the most amount of bases as possible. Zhongli is one such character. He's one of my favorite units and I use him almost 24-7, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't think that Mihoyo might have buffed him a little too much. Again, I believe the Archons should be powerful given that they're canonically the strongest entities in the respective regions, but does that mean they should eclipse every other character? Of course not, so it's largely a question of balance. Either way, fantastic character that unironically carries you through everything in the game. He's just great. That's gonna be it for today though, let me know your thoughts on Zhongli in the comments down below. Actually, something I want to know is if you think he's too powerful, how do you think he should be nerfed so as to make him less all-purpose without screwing over his usability? If I had to choose, I would say remove the elemental reduction. It's one thing for him to be the best defensive support in the game, but to be able to boost your party's damage on top of that feels like having your cake and eating it too. The player should be forced to choose between power or survivability, and not have one character who can do both. Although, maybe by that logic, Bennett and Xingqiu should be nerfed in that same regard, but that's just me. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, a rating would be much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Also, check out my main channel if you by chance play League of Legends, I do a lot of similar content there as well. Aside from that, feel free to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and check out the sister series of Why Everyone Plays called Why No One Plays if you haven't yet. Until next time, thank you all so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.